Nestled in the heart of Central Asia lies the landlocked country of Afghanistan. Much of the country consists of arid desert and rugged mountain terrain, with only 12% of its land area suitable for agriculture. Water scarcity has long plagued this region, making it difficult for Afghanistan to develop its agriculture sector and improve food security for its population. However, the nation has ambitious plans to change this through an unprecedented mega-project, constructing Asia's largest artificial river in the middle of one of its harshest deserts. The Trans-Afghanistan River Project involves diverting water from three major rivers in northern Afghanistan through tunnels and canals running over 300 miles across desert land to the fertile but dry plains in the southwestern part of the country. Once completed, it will bring abundant water to over 1.5 million hectares of desert, transforming it into a lush green oasis and boosting agricultural production. At an estimated cost of $10 billion, it is one of the most expensive infrastructure undertakings ever attempted in Afghanistan's history. But the potential rewards are enormous if successful. Improved livelihoods for millions, economic prosperity, regional cooperation, and most importantly, long-term water and food security for the nation. The inspiration for this ambitious project came from observing the success of similar river diversion schemes in other arid countries that could massively increase agricultural output and lift populations out of poverty. Most notably, it drew major inspiration from China's massive South-North Water Transfer Project, the world's largest interbasin water diversion project, which has become the lifeline for China's rapidly developing northern regions. Afghan officials studied China's project in detail. They realized that if a small fraction of glacial rivers in Afghanistan's mountains could be diverted to the dry south, it could have a similarly transformative impact. Afghanistan has over 700 rivers originating from the melting snows of the Hindu Kush mountains during spring and summer. However, aside from the Helmand River, which flows year-round, most rivers dry up by late summer, leaving the landscape parched. According to experts, diving just 10 to 15 percent of three main northern rivers' flows could potentially irrigate over 1 million hectares of arid land. With 70 percent of Afghans dependent on agriculture for their livelihood, developing vast tracts of fertile, uncultivated land in the south could lift thousands out of poverty and hunger. It presented an opportunity too good to pass up. Thus began Afghanistan's quest to undertake what is described as the task of the century, build a multi-billion dollar artificial river system crisscrossing one of its harshest deserts. The scheme envisions diverting waters from the Kabul, Panjshir, and Kunar rivers flowing through Afghanistan's northeastern provinces into Parwan, Kapisa, and Nangarhar. Part of their flows will be siphoned off through tunnels and canals stretching over 300 kilometers to Kandahar province in the south. Farmers could tap into regional distribution channels to irrigate fields and plant crops along the way. The river is planned to split into two main channels after the diversion. The western branch is proposed to flow through Ghazni, Daikundi, and Uruzgan provinces. In contrast, the eastern branch will water coast and Pakja farmlands before rejoining near Kandahar. Kandahar's plains have some of the most fertile soil in Afghanistan, but little water. Bringing the perennial flows of the northern rivers here would turn this semi-arid region green. At its fullest extent, the river plan aims to irrigate over 1.5 million hectares, transforming Afghanistan's agricultural map. While ambitious in vision, pulling off such an enormous engineering feat in an arid, mountainous country riddled with ongoing conflicts comes with immense challenges. Moving massive volumes of water across long distances in a water-scarce area requires engineering work on a scale never seen in Afghanistan before. Several tunnels, some over 30 kilometers long, would need to be bored through the country's harshest terrain to carry the diverted flows. Engineers would have to deal with complex hydrogeology, construct hundreds of bridges and siphons, lay thousands of kilometers of canals and pipelines, and build barrages and reservoirs, Sedimentation control is a major issue considering the heavy silt loads carried by the rivers. Maintaining canals in remote, inaccessible regions would test engineers to their limits. 
water must also arrive at its destination without losing significant volumes to seepage or evaporation over long-distance transfers. The project schedules construction work over 13 five-year phases until 2050, which shows the sheer scale and timeline of this undertaking. Executing such an ambitious infrastructure project also requires massive funds, skilled manpower, and expertise that Afghanistan currently lacks. While these challenges appear huge, the Afghan government is determined to make steady progress toward realizing this vision. Recognizing the importance of stability in accomplishing such nation-building projects, Kabul has also been actively engaged in peace talks with the Taliban to end decades of conflict. Recent developments, including a landmark U.S.-Taliban peace deal and ongoing intra-Afghan negotiations, present perhaps the best opportunity yet for Afghanistan to transition to peace after over 40 years of war. As conflicts wind down, more focus can shift to rebuilding critical infrastructure across the country with help from international partners. China and India, as well as regional organizations like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, have expressed strong support for the river project. This presents an opportunity for lucrative engineering and construction contracts while improving ties. Financing and technical capacity bottlenecks are also being addressed with promises of multilateral support. Overcoming each challenge in a phased manner makes the dream of flowing water across Afghanistan's deserts a realistic proposition that is gradually gaining traction. Sustained peace will be integral for progress on the river project to continue. A cessation of violence would allow for safer movement and transportation of equipment and materials across the country. It would also open up currently inaccessible areas for survey work and feasibility studies to further planning. International support is more likely to materialize in a stable environment with less security risks. If the peace process holds in the coming years, one can hope to see the first shovels break ground on this historic venture to transform Afghanistan. The potential socio-economic impacts of the completed project truly inspire a vision of transformation. Vast tracts of fertile but barren land would bloom with crops, orchards, pastures, and green oases. Over a million farmers and their families, predominantly from Afghanistan's poorest regions, would gain livelihoods and rise out of poverty. Agricultural production could increase more than tenfold, according to some estimates potentially making Afghanistan self-sufficient in staple grains. Spin-off industries like food processing, trade, and manufacturing would flourish supporting millions of jobs. Regional economic cooperation would deepen as water is shared equitably amongst provinces. With clean green power of hydropower schemes also harnessed on the way, universal access to affordable energy could boost industry. Expanding irrigated agriculture would stabilize rural livelihoods and help curb the root causes of extremism. As conflict diminishes, waves of returning refugees from Pakistan and Iran could be gainfully resettled on newly productive farms. Overall, the Trans-Afghanistan River has the potential to lift the nation's economic growth trajectory and radically improve living standards and prosperity across multiple provinces for generations. It represents not just an engineering marvel, but a visionary project truly aimed at empowering Afghanistan through harnessing its vast natural resources. If successfully realized, this ambitious scheme would place Afghanistan as a leader in megascale water infrastructure development, joining the ranks of China with its transformative water diversion projects. More importantly, it could offer Afghans hope for a stable, prosperous future independent of foreign aid through maximum utilization of their land and water wealth. While the challenges cannot be understated, the Afghan spirit of determination and increasing commitment of international partners indicate this dream may well become a reality in the coming decades. For millions in this war-torn nation that has seen little but conflict in modern times, revival of the ancient Silk Road through a flowing river traversing its landscape could offer a new dawn. If you found this look into Afghanistan's ambitious plans to flow water across its deserts fascinating, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. There's lots more exciting projects and amazing engineering feats we'll be exploring. This is just the beginning. Turn on notifications so you don't miss out.